I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on mastering strategies and learning tricks to solve algebraic equations. We'll actually see how substitution can help us to find solution of many equations within few seconds and how we can also rearrange and solve the same equation within a minute. So these are the strategies which we are going to learn. These strategies will help you a lot to solve any multiple choice test paper. So let's begin with a few examples. Here we are given that if 1 over 1 plus p plus 1 over 1 plus q plus 1 over 1 plus r is equal to 2, then you need to find the value of p over 1 plus p plus q over 1 plus q plus r over 1 over r. Now to solve such a question, you could actually substitute some values and figure the answer out. Right? That's one way of doing it, of course. Now, substitution really means that if I substitute something here, let us say if I substitute p as 0, then I get 1 here, q also as 0, I get 1 there. Uh, so we get 2 already. Uh, here, what should I do? So we have to think about it. What could we do, right? the answer to. So substitution of values like p equals to 1, q equals to 1, and r equals to 0 helps us to get this equation perfectly. Correct. So that is to say, if you do this, then you get actually 1 over 1 plus 1, which is half, right? You get 1 over 1 plus 1, and here you get 1 over 1 plus 0, and that indeed is half plus half plus one, which is two. So it helps, right? So now once you have these values, you could substitute here also and get your answer. So this substitution method, if you are good at substitution, you can actually answer the questions very fast, right? So let's see. So if I do one, one and zero for P, Q and R, then what do I get? I know my denominators since I did all that here which are 2, 2, and in this case, 1. So I could now write this as 1 over 2, plus again 1 over 2, and r for me is 0, so this is just 0. So we get half plus half as 1, and we get our answer as b. Does make sense to you? So a good substitution comes with ideas and tricks, and definitely helps you to find the correct answer in no time. Correct. How will you do this without substitution is another way to look into it. It's a very interesting question. Now see, the denominator, we have 1 plus p. And we need to find all this. We can say, well, let it be equal to, let us say, some value x. We don't know what x is. So let's call this as our equation number 1. And this as our equation number 2. Since we have... Here, in the numerator, P, Q, and R, what we could do here is add these two, right? So if I add equation 1 with equation 2, what do I get? Let's see. So if I add these two, I get 1 plus P in the numerator over 1 plus P, right? Plus here, we get 1 plus Q over 1 plus q and then here we get 1 plus r over 1 plus r and if we add these two quantities I get 2 plus x so that is what I get we know these values are just 1 so we get 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 2 2 plus x now this is 3 so we get 3 equals 2 2 plus x and that gives you the value of x as 3 minus 2 is x, which is equal to 1. So even these three steps are not bad, and we get the same answer. Do you see that? So if you don't get a clue of substituting 1, 1, and 0, or something like that, then if you know the strategy, even then you can actually solve this question within a minute. Do you understand? Perfect. So the whole idea of this set of videos is to understand these strategies and do them either way, right? 
That is the approach here. I hope you understand and appreciate it. So you can see that first method might take few seconds, right? Depending on how fast you can guess the numbers, but this will also take less than a minute. So both these strategies are perfectly fine to solve such questions. Now here is a question for you. So I'd like you to pause the video and apply the strategy which we just learned and solve this question. Right. So let us see how to do this particular question. So I think most of you must have got this strategy. Let us do it with the method learn. We have a minus p. So if I say that this equation is 1 for me and this equation is 2 for me and if I do equation 2 because we need a minus p right so if I do equation 2 minus equation 1 what do I get I get a minus p in the numerator right so I get a minus p over a minus p plus b minus q over b minus q plus c minus r over c minus r so here we are assuming this to be x right so it is x minus 3 now these three are ones so we get 3 equals to x minus 3 or x equals to 3 plus 3 and that is indeed 6 we get option d as the right option does it make sense to you right so now you will learn that sometimes it is not easy to guess the numbers and get the answer knowing the correct method definitely helps and by now you must have reduced your time from one minute to almost half a minute. Perfect. So these type of questions should be answered in the fashion shown. So you could work with these two equations and get your solution. Perfect. Now let's take another kind of equation. This time we have x plus 1 over uh, 1 plus, uh, this is I think x plus 5. Let me rewrite. So yeah. So we have x plus 1 over x plus 5 equals to minus 7 and we need to find the value of x plus 5 to the power of 99 plus x to the power of 400 and so on. How are you going to do such a question? Now this is indeed difficult, right? Well, this is minus 7 here. Guessing a value is very difficult. So we need to understand a strategy. Since we are working with x plus 5, somehow let us get x plus 5. So we have the equation as x plus 1 over x plus 5 equals to minus 7. Now see what happens if I, if I want x plus 5, I'm going to add 5 on both these sides. Correct? So if I add 5 on both these sides, I do get x plus 5, right, plus 1 over x plus 5, and that is equal to minus 2. Now we can think about something to substitute right so that means how can I get minus 2 well I can only get a minus 2 if my x plus 5 is equal to minus 1 in that case substituting x plus 5 as minus 1 we get minus 1 plus minus 1 which is equal to minus 2 right so that works that means what we could do here is substitute x plus 5 as minus 1. So here we have done indirect substitution. Now this is a great technique. So if you cannot directly substitute and get your answer, you could at least indirectly substitute. Now if I substitute minus 1 for x plus 5, this becomes minus 1 to the power of 99, that becomes minus 1 to the power of 100, and this becomes minus 1 to the power of 101. Now all odd powers will give you minus 1, so this will result in minus 1, but even powers will give you plus 1, right? So this is what you get. Now that means you get minus 1 as your answer, and option C is the right option. Does it make sense to you? So these could be other kinds of questions where direct substitution may not be a good idea but rearranging them and then substituting a block as a value can actually help right so let's move on and take the next question now and learn another strategy now here is another very interesting set of questions 
x plus 1 over y equals to 1 and y plus 1 over z equals to 1, then find the value of x plus 1 over x. Now we can try both the techniques here. One is substitution and the other one is to rearrange. Right. So let's get totally prepared for such a test. Right. Now how could you substitute? Now let's say if the value of x is, see none of these values could be zero, so you have to be very careful about it, right? So now, if the value of x is one, then we cannot get zero, so we cannot put the value of x as one. So if I take x as two, then I have to take y as minus one, correct? Right, so what we could substitute here as, we could substitute x as equals to two, in that case, y equals to minus 1. Then I get this equation, right? So I get 2 minus 1 equals to 1. That works. Now I know that y is minus 1. How do I get the answer as 1 when I add 1 over z? So that means I should substitute z as equal to half, right? So that is what I should substitute. So these become my substituted values. Now I can get my solution by putting these values of x, y, and z in the given equation. Now z in this case is half, so we get half plus 1 over x, which is x is 2. That is another half. And that gives me answer as 1, and therefore option b is the right option. You see how substitution can really help us to get the answer in just a few seconds, right? Now how could you rearrange and solve? Well, we need what z and x are, so what we can do is we can write both in terms of y and then we can figure out the answer. So from the first equation, which is x equals to 1 over y, right, we have x plus 1 over y equals to 1, x equals to 1 minus 1 over y, which I can write as y minus 1 over y for the value of x. To get the value of z, I need to isolate this, right? So, so the second equation given to us is y plus 1 over z equals to 1. We need to isolate what z is. So we'll do 1 over z equals to 1 minus y or z equals to 1 over 1 minus y. So we have isolated both of them. It doesn't take much time. Now what should we do? We should substitute them in our expression, which is x plus z plus 1 over x. So z is given to us as 1 over 1 minus y, and what we need is 1 over x. That means it should be y over y minus 1. Well, if I take y minus 1 or 1 minus 1, I could take 1 minus y in the denominator, then this becomes negative, right? So I become 1 minus y. And 1 minus y divided by 1 minus 1, y is definitely equal to 1. So we again get the same answer. Do you see that? So this may require some time, but if it is not a multiple choice question, and if you need to figure out the answer, that could be a good way of doing it, right? In a multiple choice question, if you are able to guess these values, then you could get this question solved within 20 seconds, right? So here is our last question. If a plus b equals to 2c, then find the value of a over a plus a minus c plus c over b minus c. Four options are given to you. I hope by now you have learned many strategies. I like you to apply a strategy and find the answer. Also, guess the numbers, substitute some values for a, b, and c, and find your answer. Right. So while you are trying to guess the numbers, let me show you the actual method which could be used to solve such equation. Right. Now what you figure out is that you are given relation between a, b, and c. And here we have a over a minus c and b minus c. That means I could use this value of c. There are two c's, one with a and one with b. So let's work with the given equation, which is a plus b equals to 2c. Now you can also time this out, like how much time does it really take? So think like c is 2c, c plus c. We could bring one of them here, write this as a minus c, and take b on the other side and write this as minus b plus c, right? 
what we really notice is denominator is b minus c so there is no harm in writing the right side with negative taken out as a factor and b minus c in the bracket so what we get is a relation between a minus c and b minus c so a minus c is negative of b minus c correct now let us see how to solve the given equation so i'm going to now copy this particular equation here right and then we are going to solve it so we are given the equation a over a minus c plus c over b minus c now retaining the left part as such and writing b minus c as negative of a minus c i could do that right c over negative of because this is one of the same thing this is negative right okay so negative of a minus c i could see this as a over a minus c this negative will make it negative here and we get c over a minus c now these denominators are same and the numerators are also same so what do we get here so that gives you a minus c in the numerator and common denominator of a minus c and you know this is equal to 1 so we get our answer as b perfect so we could solve it directly also if you try to do it with this method it will still take less than a minute so so that type of question if you know how to solve it can be solved within a minute time but if you could guess some values it could have been much faster some of you must have got your answer well when we say 2c we are sure that these are combining to make even numbers right so so we have to guess even numbers that is something very good second since we have a minus c and b minus c there is no harm in taking the the value of c to be kind of less than a or b right correct so okay anyway it doesn't really matter so let's try to figure out so let's assume c to be 1 then 2 times 1 is 3 and we could get 3 as 1 and 2 right we could get 3 as 1 and 2 we could also take c as for example 3 then i get 3 times 2 at 6 so i could take these values at 2 and 4 so there are many options so let's go with the option that a is equals to 2 b is equal to 4 in that case c should be equals to 2 times 3 will give us 6 right because when you add them up you are getting 6 and 2 times what is 6 so so 2 times c should be 2 times 3 so c equals to 3 gives you a good option perfect so with that value given you can now substitute here and calculate we have taken a as 2 so we get 2 over 2 minus 2 minus 3 plus for c we have taken the value as 3 and for b we have 4 we got 4 minus 3 right so that gives you minus 2 and this gives you plus 3 when you add you do get answer as plus 1 correct so you could do this I've taken uh, 2, 4, and 3 as, a, as my numbers. You could take some other set of numbers and find the solution. So, substituting numbers and getting the answer is always a good option, provided you get them fast enough. And if you're sure about a method which, is, which can solve the equation within a minute's time, then using that particular method is also not a bad option. So, when you're going for a test, I would like you to prepare yourself for such questions and be sure that you know how to solve them uh, within a minute using this method right so so i hope you understand and appreciate how we could solve these algebraic equations i'll like you to watch my other videos on these strategies as you learn you get more confidence and i'm sure that will help you a lot in performing better all the best to you all and if you like and share my videos with your friends that will be great. Also, you can subscribe to my videos. Thank you and all the best.